tonight I'm going to show you what's new inside of Pro Tools, specifically uh, for Adobe Atmos concerning the internal renderer. So let's dive right into it here and let's take a look at some avid solutions for immersive audio. So our latest version of Pro Tools is Pro Tools 2024.6. And we're going to talk about some of the new enhancements regarding Dolby Atmos that are in this version. So some of the most important things right off the bat are new monitoring and re-render formats. So now in Pro Tools 2024.6, you're able to access a 7.1.2 format, 914, and a Stereo Direct. And Stereo Direct is probably the coolest new feature that we'll dive into in just a few more slides. You also have uh, new object and binaural mode views where you can actually toggle your object groups and your binaural mode directly on the track. So that's in both the edit and the mix window. Uh, and you can actually toggle these changes as your transport is rolling and you are mixing. Here inside of Pro Tools, you actually have that hands-on control uh, and you can access it immediately while the transport is rolling, which is a very cool new tool. Now, you can access all of your settings for Dolby Atmos inside of Pro Tools from one menu. We have the Dolby Atmos settings uh, pop-up window and here you're able to access your headphone re-renders, your loudness re-renders, custom re-renders. You can jump to your I.O. setup. You're able to access your trim and down mix settings. The trim and down mix settings will turn orange and alert you if there's any deviation from the normal factory settings. And you're able to some, uh, access something called groups, which we will dive into once we open up Pro Tools. With these groups, you're able to solo and mute different collections of tracks or objects. But what I think is the coolest new feature in 2024.6 is the Stereo Direct. So traditionally, uh, with this Dolby Atmos format, you're able to work in, say, uh, a large configuration of 916, right? The fun thing about Dolby Atmos is the ability to adapt to different speaker formats or di different listening formats, whether that's 916 to uh, 714 to uh, traditional 71, 514, 51 uh, stereo and binaural. Now, before this stereo direct re render format, the stereo re render was derived from a 5 1 down mix. And so it had to follow the algorithm uh, to downmix through each of those different processes. Now with the direct stereo render, it's a more accurate stereo image. So it's a very fast and efficient way to be able to get a more clear stereo uh, rendering of your project directly from the entire Atmos mix. So the re-render process doesn't have to follow uh, that traditional down mix format, downstream of the 5.1. You can actually select stereo direct. You can monitor that in real time or uh, in an offline bounce. So it just opens up the ability for creatives to quickly create a stereo uh, output from your Dolby Atmos mix. As I mentioned earlier, we have the new binaural mode edit window view where you're able to not only see it in the Dolby Atmos I.O. setup, but directly on the track. You can select your monitor path directly from the Dolby Atmos renderer setup panel, and that is where you can fold down and change your listening environment uh, based on the biggest configuration of the room. So for example, next door, we have a 714 room. The largest format that you're able to select is 714, but you can also listen and monitor in any format less than 714. So you can have 71, 514, Stereo Direct, and you can change that monitoring format on the fly inside of Pro Tools without having to leave uh, the application. The internal renderer, it's flexible, it's user customizable. You're able to change the view uh, to have your traditional theatrical view where you're looking at a screen inside the renderer, or 
Uh, as on the right over here, you can have the floating head in the middle, and you can be panning your objects around that center image of the head. And your metering can be changed to either have your traditional film metering or your Dolby Ballistics. The very exciting thing about all of these updates is that third-party plugin manufacturers are now creating more and more immersive tools. Uh, for example, here we have some Fab Filter, we have some MIC DSP, we have illustrious plates, cinematic rooms. Uh, but we also have some very cool plugins from a company called Sound Particles. So Sound Particles is a small but mighty company that makes uh, some very impressive immersive tools. So it's exciting to see so many uh, plugin manufacturers creating these wide format with plugins to accommodate for this new format. And the last but uh, very cool update that we put in 2024.6 is the ability to bounce, commit, and freeze live re-renders. So all of these different formats, all of these different uh, sized widths of, of mixes that you can derive from an Atmo session can actually be ingested live into Pro Tools and recorded uh, while you're playing back the mix. So that's gonna allow you to be able to create stems, uh, essentially print stems, live as you're playing back through the program. You're also able to commit those, render them, uh, and even freeze uh, those re-renders. And being able to put these on an actual track that you can record allows you to put on additional processing. So you can add any type of compression or, or limiting to be able to essentially master your output signal from the Dolby Render. So these are some of the new advancements that we've made in 2024.6. Let's dive into Pro Tools and take a look at where exactly all of these features live. So here we are at Pro Tools now. And what's cool about Pro Tools is that it actually comes with a Dolby Atmos session that you can open up at home to start learning exactly how to play with these new tools. And what we talked about before is that you can start mixing Dolby Atmos on headphones. Uh, you can actually use headphones, a uh, laptop, computer, or a pair of headphones, uh, and set your monitor output to those headphones. Of course, you'll only be limited by two channels, so all of the immersive panning you do will be folded down to either stereo or binaural, but it allows you to use the tools, start working at home, and uh, even work on the go. So this is a, a great solution if you're you know, working on a dub stage, working on a mix, uh, you want to take your, your session home, maybe tweak some sound effects, you can do that on headphones, still use the internal renderer, bring it back to the dub stage the next day, bring it back to the studio the next day, and then compare your work on a set of speakers to what you are listening to in your headphones. So all we have to do to be able to set up your monitoring path for Dolby Atmos is go into Setup, go into I.O., and we go over here to our output path. And so we are using an Mbox Studio as our output path here. And we only have two speakers. We're working on a stereo setup. So we have stereo left and right on one and two. And on our monitor path, we make sure to select Mbox Studio Internal 1 and 2. So this means that inside the Dolby Atmos renderer, the largest width that we'll be able to achieve is stereo. So in this I.O. setup page, you'll see up on the top here that we have a couple different uh, tabs, Input, Output Bus, and Dolby Atmos. So in this Dolby Atmos tab it is where you'll see all of the paths for your bed, right up here at the top, your 712 bed as defined by Dolby, and all of your objects 11 to 128. Also in this tab, we have internal renderer, or we can switch that to external renderer. So it's a very quick switch that you can flip to go from working internally to externally. Now, if we open up the Dolby renderer, we can go down here to Window, Dolby Atmos renderer. Now we can actually see the three-dimensional space that we're working in here. 
we can see our monitoring format. So here we're able to access stereo, stereo direct or binaural because we defined our stereo output as our monitor path. We're able to mute the entire renderer, solo only beds or objects from here. We have all of our metering here on the right side. If we look here on the left, we see our headphone re-render. We can disable it. We can choose it to be binaural, stereo direct or stereo. We have our loudness re-render. Now, this is a very cool re-render that's automatically built into Pro Tools where you're able to take the 5.1 down mix of the Adobe Atmos session, send it to an aux track and put your favorite metering plugin on it, whether that be a, a Waves plugin, New Gen, Isotope. This is where you say, okay, I want it to be a 5.1 format, or I want it to be a stereo format, and then you send that re-render to a bus, put on your favorite flavor of a metering plugin, and that's how you can check your loudness metering. I want to take a look at this very cool tab on the left side of our objects and beds view called groups. Now, Groups is a newish feature that is going to allow both music and post-production sound professionals to quickly create uh, different flavors of stems and Dolby Atmos exports. So what you can do quickly here, it comes preset with dialogue, music, effects, and narration. So now if you're working on a post-production project, obviously you're gonna have some dialogue, uh, you're gonna have music, you're gonna have effects. You can say, let's, let's create some other groups here. Uh, you know, maybe, you know, explosions, right? You can have uh, Foley effects, et cetera. And say your director is requesting a, an, an M&E export, right? Well, rather than going and reworking the entire mix and muting specific uh, aux groups, you can actually just assign groups to individual tracks, folders, and say, let's create a, a custom export. So what we can do, let's take this session for example. We have a bunch of objects here. So Here's where we can change our binaural mode, off, near, mid, far. You don't have to go into the renderer to do this anymore, but right underneath that, we have groups. So say we have effects, effects. We can even go into the renderer, open up groups, and color code this. We can make effects yellow. We can make music pink. And we can make a blue group as well. And that color coding will actually come and spill out across your tracks. So let's see, we have another object over here. And another object over here. So this is a quick way to be able to color code your session, organize your session, and create different food groups, right? Different food groups of all the different audio assets that you have in your project. Now, when you go to bounce your mix or export your Dolby Atmos session, what you can do is choose file type, Dolby Atmos. Now we have a few more options here. What we can do is create re-renders. We can configure this. We can make custom re-renders and we can say M&E. We can add that. Now we can choose to make this a live re-render. So while you're playing back inside of Pro Tools, you can actually have all of these print to a record track if you decide to make this live. You can select the format. Do I want it to be binaural, stereo direct? Do I want it to be 914? Depending on your delivery format. So let's say that we want to create a 714 M&E do we want it to be a full mix or do we want it to be custom? Now when it's custom, we see all of our groups here. So say, okay, we just want music and effects. Do we want to include the bed tracks or just the objects? 
So we can even make a custom re-render that is M&E bits, M&E objects. And this is a really quick and easy way to be able to create all these different exports to be able to deliver upon your completion of the project. So this is a, a newer feature that not a lot of people know about that really shows the, the power of the internal routing of the Adobe Atmos render in Pro Tools. So thank you for coming out to the Avid office here. And a, a big thank you uh, to Wendy and Woody for putting together such a, a great community of people, the LA Post Production Group. Be sure to catch up on past meetings, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and be sure to connect with us on Facebook and Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And a huge thank you to our partners, our platinum partner, AJ Video Systems, our gold level partner, Adobe Blackmagic Design, OWC, Zeiss, Frame.io, and our silver partners, Isotope uh, by Native Instruments, SGO, and Avid. And we have a lot of other amazing companies that support us. We have supporting partners, media partners, and community partners.